Hi, my name is Megan. I am a postdoctoral researcher at the Wellcome Center for Human Neuroimaging. And today I'm going to do a demonstration of how we can use SPM to perform source reconstruction analysis. So I'll start by reminding you of the data set we'll be using today. We're looking at the Wakeman and Henson data set that was published in 2015. So here participants were presented with faces and scrambled faces, and they were asked to judge how symmetric the faces were. And during this task, uh, concurrent M and EEG were recorded, and we also have EEG electrode locations and scalp points uh, registered using a polemus digitizer. And finally, we also have a structural MRI as well as functional MRI from the same task. So let's start by taking a look at the practical steps that we need to complete in order to perform this analysis. So first, we need to construct a generative mo model. So this tells us how the measured data is generated from neural sources. So to do this, we need to get a cortical mesh from an MRI. So this will tell us the locations of the brain sources. We then need to co-register this mesh with our M and EEG data. So we need to link these coordinate systems. And we do this using at least three points uh, that are known in each of the coordinate systems uh, called fiducials. And then finally, we need to compute our forward model. So here we need to choose a volume conductor and compute our lead fields. And the lead fields tell us the mapping from activity in a neural source to the sensors. So the next step is to perform the source reconstruction itself using our data. So here we're asking what is the location and strength of sources in the brain based on our data and our generative model. And then finally, we need to summarize our data. So it's useful to do this in an image um, if we're interested in performing statistical analyses. <clears throat> and in SPM, you have two options here. You can summarize the results as a nifty image, which is a 3D volumetric image, or a gifty, which is a cortical surface mesh. So in SPM, you can use three different approaches to perform this analysis, and they can also be combined. So the first option is the graphical user interface, or the GUI. The GUI has the advantage that it's very accessible, it's very beginner-friendly, because you can basically perform the analysis by pressing buttons. So you get a good visual representation of the options for the analysis. However, with the GUI, it's quite difficult to reproduce and document exactly what's been done because you have to remember exactly which options you've chosen by pressing the buttons. Uh, it's also rather unclear precisely what code is running under the hood. And it's also less efficient if you're, for example, running analyses for many participants. So the second option is the batch. So the batch is also a graphical user interface where you can string together a series of processing steps or analyses that have been automated using this batch system. So the advantage here is you don't have to write any code. Uh, the options for the analyses are quite clear, so you can choose most of them from a drop-down menu. Uh, the analysis is easy to document and reproduce because you can save the batch analysis. And it's quite efficient because uh, the batch can run unattended. And the final option is scripting. So writing a MATLAB script that calls the SPM functions. And the advantage here is that you know precisely what code is running. Uh, it's also very easy to document and reproduce because you can save your script. It allows for a high degree of flexibility and customization. And it's also relatively easy to debug, so you can more easily identify sources of error relative to the two other methods. This uh, strategy is also efficient, so the code can obviously run unattended, uh, but it requires quite a lot of effort and development time, so you have to figure out and choose which functions to use. All right, so let's start by taking a look at the graphical user interface. So first, we need to add SPM to our MATLAB path. And we can open the GUI by writing SPM, EEG in the command window. So our main window is here in the upper left-hand corner. And the button we're interested in for this analysis is the 3D source reconstruction button. So first we want to load our data set. Here we're going to use data from a single subject. So this is subject number 15. 
And this data has been pre-processed and averaged. So this means we'll be performing an evoked analysis. But it's also worth noting that you can load single trial data if you're interested in performing an induced analysis. So with SPM, you can perform multiple source reconstruction analyses using the same data set. So this analysis has the index one. Uh, and when we take a look at the batch, we will perform a second uh, source reconstruction analysis. So the first buttons that are enabled are the ones that will help us to construct our cortical mesh. So we can do this using a single subject MRI or a template MRI. So we have a structural scan from our participant 15. So we will start by loading that. And here we have some options with respect to how we want to construct the cortical mesh, coarse, normal, and fine. So these options refer to the number of source points or dipoles in the mesh. So coarse has about 5,000, normal about 8,000, and fine around uh, 20,000 dipoles. So for most applications, normal is sufficient. And here in the graphics window, we have an image of our mesh. Now we can see that the co-register button is enabled. So this is the next step. So we need to specify the positions of our fiducials. Typically, we use the nasion, the right preauricular point, and the left preauricular point. And these uh, positions can be specified in different ways. So we can type in the positions. We can click on a structural image, or we can select them from a list if we have the fiducials saved with our data set. And we do with the data set we're working with today, so we will select them from a list. And here we're asked if we want to use head shape points. So these are the points that uh, we have collected using the Polymus digitizer. Uh, this can be helpful for the co-registration. So today we will say yes. And now we can inspect the results of the co-registration for the EEG first. So we can use the 3D rotate tool to check that the electrodes, which are the black spheres, are roughly on the scalp. So this looks fine. And then we can also take a look at the results of the MEG co-registration. And here we're just checking that these sensors are positioned appropriately with respect to the scalp. So this also looks quite good. So now we've co-registered our two coordinate systems and we're ready to compute our forward model. And here we have to choose a volume conductor for each of the modalities. So for EEG, we recommend using the boundary element model. And for MEG, we recommend the single shell model. So in just a moment, we'll get the chance to inspect our forward models. So we can look at our EEG forward model. And this is a boundary element model. So as expected, we have multiple shells. And if we take a look at our MEG forward model, we have a single shell. So this is also what we would expect. So now we're ready to perform our source reconstruction. Um, we can do this by pressing the invert button. And here we have several options we can choose between uh, with respect to which type of uh, source imaging we want to perform. So the imaging button uh, gives us uh, distributed source reconstruction analyses. So these types of analyses have the assumption that multiple brain sources are active. So this is in contrast to our variational Bayes equivalent current dipole, which assumes uh, one or very few sources in the brain are active. And we also have a DCM option that I'll leave for now because you'll be introduced to this in the next set of lectures. So today we're going to look at the imaging option. And uh, we can choose whether we want to invert all conditions or trials together or not. And this is typically re recommended if we're going to perform a, a statistical analysis afterward. So here we can choose between a standard or custom inversion. I'm going to choose custom so I can show you some of the options we have here. So these are the four types of inversion that are available. <clears throat> We have a GS, which is greedy search. It's an optimization algorithm for multiple sparse priors. So this is the default. We also have a, 
uh, Bayesian Loretta, a Bayesian minimum norm, as well as an empirical Bayesian beamformer. So today we're going to look at the default, which is the GREE search multiple sparse priors. We're going to invert our entire time window. And uh, this option here allows you to apply a handing taper to downweight the data at the beginning and end of the trial. So this can help with edge effects. And we will filter the data from 0 to 256 hertz. Uh, we're not going to use any source priors. And we're also not going to restrict our solutions to particular parts of the brain. However, it's worth noting that this can be useful if you have hypotheses about which brain regions are active during your task. And uh, what's useful with SPM is that for each uh, source reconstruction analysis, you can get uh, the model evidence for that inversion. So this can be used to compare inversions, for example, with different models or different algorithms or different settings. Uh, but today we're going to choose no. And here we can select which modalities we want to use for the inversion. So SPM can perform source reconstruction uh, using several modalities. So we're going to invert all the modalities together today. So now we're computing the lead fields, first for EEG. And you can see the progress bar is moving up towards 8,000. So this is the number of source points. Afterwards, we'll need to compute the MEG lead fields. And uh, SPM saves these lead fields as a large matrix in a data file that's separate from the data set. So this file has the name SPM gain matrix. And this matrix has the dimensions, uh, number of sensors by number of source points or dipoles. So this can take a little bit of time. So I will uh, cut to when this is uh, finished. Good, so now we have our maximum intensity projection in the graphics window. So here at the top, we have the time course for the region where activity is maximal. And what we can see here is that uh, we have our maximal activity around 170 milliseconds. And at the bottom here, we have the distribution of source activity uh, for the time point where activity is maximal. Also worth noting is that we have our model evidence here as well as percent variance explained. Uh, and these results are for condition one, but we can toggle between conditions by clicking the condition button and then clicking the MIP button again. So we can also do the same and look at condition three. So next, we want to summarize our results for a specific time and frequency window. So we can do this by pressing the window button. So we saw that our activity was maximal around 170 milliseconds. So we'll look at the time window from 100 to 250 milliseconds. And we're going to look at a frequency band from 10 to 20 hertz. So then we have a figure that summarizes our results for this specific time and frequency window. So the last step here is to summarize these results as an image. So we can do this by pressing the image button and we can choose between two different output formats. So the image is the 3D volumetric uh, nifty and the mesh option is the cortical mesh or the gifty. So here we're going to look at the image. And here we can see our results interpolated on a structural scan. So uh, it's also important to note that SPM prints uh, one image for each condition. So the last things I want to show you with the GUI are the uh, render button first. So this can be useful for exploring uh, the results of your analysis. So we have our uh, results on a brain surface here. We can also play a movie. This will show us how the activity changes over time. And then at the bottom here, we also have uh, the topographical representation of our results uh, based on our data, as well as uh, predicted from our generative model. And here we can toggle between uh, modalities. Good. So the last thing I want to mention here is this group inversion button. So this can be useful if you're doing a larger study. And this type of analysis adds the additional constraint that uh, all the areas that are active are uh, consistent across participants. 
So again, this can be quite useful if you're analyzing um, a group of participants. So now let's take a look at the same analysis using the batch. So we have to open the GUI and then press the batch button. And here to find the available modules, we have to click SPM, MEEG, and then source reconstruction. So first we want to specify our head model. So we can start by loading our data set. And next we choose our inversion index. So we'll make this analysis number two. And here is where we can construct our cortical mesh. So for mesh source, we want to choose individual structural image as before and load our image here. And here we're specifying normal re mesh resolution. So the next step is the co-registration. So uh, here we're going to write the fiducial labels. And select them from a list as we did before. And do the same with RPA. And the same with LPA. And here we have the option to use head shape points. So like before, we'll choose yes. And then here we have our recommended volume conductors for EEG, the boundary element model, and for MEG, the single shell model. So now we're ready to add the next module. And the next step in our analysis is the source inversion. So here, what's quite useful is that we can add a dependency. So we can run this module on the output of the previous module. So we do this by selecting the dependency button and then choosing the previous module. And here we want to specify our inversion index as two. Here we want to invert all of our conditions together and with respect to inversion parameters here, we will choose custom again, just to show you the options. Um, but these are all the defaults, which is uh, basically what we used before. So we'll leave this as is, and we'll add our last module here. So the last module is the inversion results. And again, here we can start by adding independency so that we run this module on the output of the previous one. So the source inversion module. Again, we'll specify inversion index number two. Our time window of interest here is 100 to 250 milliseconds. Our frequency window of interest was 10 to 20 Hertz. We're performing an evoked analysis, and we are interested in our um, output being an image. This is a nifty. So now we can run this analysis by pressing the green button here. And what we can see is that we get the same output in the graphics window as with the GUI. So we're now computing our lead fields. Again, this can take a little bit of time. So I'll skip ahead in the video to when this is completed. Good. So now we can see a similar results in our graphics window. And we have now printed our nifty images. So. Uh, if you go back to the batch window here, I just want to show you a few more things. So uh, what's helpful here is that we can save this analysis pipeline. So we can just save the batch in this way. So this, we'll save it as batch source recon. 
So when we save the batch, this means we can basically uh, load the same pipeline again and run it again exactly as we did before. Uh, what we can also do is we can uh, clear this data set and then we can choose the option save batch and script. So I'll just overwrite this and call it batch test. And here we get an additional file with the same name, so an M file. And this, uh, this script can be used to run the same pipeline over, for example, multiple subjects. So here we can enter a number of runs. This could, for example, be the number of participants. And here is where we would uh, put the uh, file name, so the input to the analysis pipeline. So uh, basically you can use this for loop to run the same pipeline over um, multiple subjects. So this is also quite useful. So the last option we have for this analysis is to use a MATLAB script that calls the SPM functions. So here I'm not going to go through all of the steps like before. Um, I actually think it's a lot easier to do the co-registration using the batch or GUI, but I'll point out which functions are relevant. So first we're adding SPM to our path and loading our data set. So the key function for creating the mesh, the cortical mesh is SPM EEG INV mesh. And the key function for the co-registration is SPM EEG INV data reg. So here we're going to set our uh, analysis index to two. So we're going to use the uh, co-registration from uh, our previous analysis with the batch and then uh, perform a new forward model computation and uh, new inversion. So I'm just going to run this cell. And let's take a look at the forward model. So this is uh, precisely the same as before, boundary element model for uh, EEG and single shell for MEG. So here we're using the function SPM EEG INV forward to compute the forward model. And here again, we get the option to display the results. So I'll just show the uh, EEG forward model as before. So we get the same output as we got from the GUI in the batch. So now we'll take a look at the inversion itself. So here we're taking a shortcut and loading the lead fields that were saved based on one of our previous analyses. So this is just to cut down on the time because it can be a little bit of a lengthy computation. So here we're going to change the inversion type. We're going to look at the uh, Bayesian minimum norm. Uh, all, of, all of the other settings are the same. So we're inverting all trials and conditions together. Uh, we're using the entire uh, time window, panning taper, filter from zero to 256 Hertz and no additional source priors. And then here we're inverting all the modalities together. And the key function for the inversion here is SPM EG invert. So now I'll just run this uh, cell. And we can see here we have a similar display of results. They look a little bit different than before because the inversion type is different. But again, we see a uh, peak in activity at around 170 milliseconds. So now we can move on to selecting a contrast window. So we're using the same time window of interest and same frequency of window of interest. And the important function here is SPM EEG INV results. So again, we get uh, an image summarizing results for this specific time and frequency window. And lastly, we are going to save our image. So uh, we're using again the nifty option here, image. And the important function is SPM EEG INV mesh to voxels. So we're now writing our images, and then we can display them interpolated on a structural image as before. So uh, this concludes the source reconstruction analysis demonstration, and we're happy to take any questions. So thank you for your attention.